Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, understanding risk sentiment, you know, risk on and risk off, you know, what is it and um, the environments um, and the triggers really of risk on and risk off. And you really, as a trader, have to be aware of when an environment is more risk on or more risk off because um, really money flows into and out of certain asset classes depending on um, what environment we are in. So first of all, what is uh, risk on and risk off? And according to Investopedia, um, risk sentiment, right, which is risk environment as well, it can be interchanged. It says, while asset prices ultimately detail the risk sentiment of the market, investors can often find signs of changing sentiment through corporate earnings, macroeconomic data, global central bank action and statements and other factors. So risk on environments, yeah, are you, oh, sorry, are often carried by a combination of expanding corporate earnings, optimistic economic outlook, accommodative central bank policies and speculation. We can also assume that an increase in the stock market is a sign that risk is on. As investors feel the market is being supported by strong influential fundamentals, they perceive less risk about the market and its outlook. Conversely, risk off environments can be caused by widespread corporate earning downgrades, contracting or slowing economic data, uncertain central bank policy, a rush to safe havens and other factors. Just like the stock market rises relating to a risk on environment, a drop in the stock market equals a risk off environment. That's because investors want to avoid risk and are averse to it. So risk on is when traders want to put more risk on the table. Yeah. And risk off is when traders want to put you know, take risk off the table, depending on certain um, environments, right? And so um, when thinking about risk on and risk off, it's not necessarily a binary uh, state. It's not either risk on or risk off. Um, think about risk on and off as more as a scale. So a scale would be something like maybe one to five, where you might have a bit of a neutral, so you might have more extreme ends, yeah, where this end here is more of your, or the middle is more of a neutral, right, bias, and you have, for example, that might be zero. This is the way that I think about it, yeah? And let's say, for example, that is extreme off, and that might be something like, you know, maybe 10, right? That might be ranked number 10 here extreme off and this would be for example extreme on right so this is off yeah, o -F -F. and this is on now depending on the actual environment and what is causing the risk on or risk off or what the what event is triggering will depend on how much i guess uh, the market sees um the extreme of the risk off now i guess to compare or to, in recent history the most recent extreme risk off event yeah it would be something like covid that would be an absolute extreme 10 yeah uh the russia Ukraine war would be something that would be very similar to the um, uh, to to COVID as it did it has affected uh, various regions of the world, not just Russia and Ukraine, but all the surrounding countries, even um, you know in Europe and even the US and the UK, right? Um, and risk on would be more of a favorable environment when there's really no risk events or everything is pretty much. Um, hunky dory right as we say so um whenever we're comparing um new risk events best thing to do is to think about the most extreme risk off event and compare 
you know, the um, risk event that is happening to the most extreme events. Most extreme events would be, for example, what our major risk off events would be, um, again, COVID lockdown, something like the Ukraine war. Um, recently, we've had the SVB um, and other, I think, Silver Bank Bank. Um, and the fear was a collapse, I should say. And the fear was that the um, the banking sector collapse may have been systemic similar to what happened in 2008 so 2008 was a um, would be a very extreme uh, risk event something like brexit for example was quite extreme as it affected not only the uk but trading relationships you know around the world in europe right and so again as i say compare um, if you're looking at, um, you know, the degree of risk off and where are we, it is, you know, quite subjective. But if you kind of compare it to the most extreme um, uh, risk off events that we've had in recent history or over the last, you know, 10, 15 years, is the current um, risk off event that we may be experiencing in the financial markets, is it comparable to the most you know, extreme event. And if it isn't, then you can kind of place it maybe four, five, sixes, etc. around there. Or maybe what just one, twos and threes, right? It could be something around there. Again, it's, it is, it can be a bit subjective, but at least it gives you a rough idea as to how extreme it might be. And one of the things that we have to be aware of is, you know, the papers sensationalizing uh, risk events. Um, but always know that risk events no matter how bad they get, will always be priced in, meaning that the market will eventually reach a valuation as to, you know, what the um, the effect on uh, the risk event will have on asset prices. So think about, for example, the recent um, Russia-Ukraine war, right? Now, uh, when it first started in uh, around February, March times uh, last year, this is the dollar Russian ruble. We had the Russian ruble absolutely um, devalue against uh, major currencies like the dollar. But eventually, that was um, the event was eventually priced in, in terms of how bad was the... Um, the Ukraine war on the Russian ruble, right? There are many different factors, but ultimately the uh, risk event gets uh, gets priced in. If you go to, and if you go to somewhere like the, um, something like the, um, um, let's say we go to Aussie yen, or any currency, and we go back to 2020, we look at the risk off event, which was COVID. Eventually, it got priced in to the point where um, the market started to forward think. And this is what the market does the market thinks forward and into the future and thinks, okay, this risk event, will it last forever or how long will it last? And what are the future valuations if it doesn't last or if we come to some sort of conclusion? And so as bad as risk events tend to be, they typically A, get priced in, and then B, what then gets priced in is, um, I guess, the solution, right? And moving forward and how we move forward uh, as a, either a country or, you know, as, a, as, as, a, as, as the world, right? and uh, our ability to overcome certain issues and problems. For example, you know, is there, you know, peace in the world, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, that is really, um, uh, it's really important to understand that, that risk of sentiment, yeah, can drive prices to actually where you want to be a buyer. Because once the dust settles, yeah, once the risk of dust settles, Eventually, what will happen is, is that investors will start to then um, look for bargains, right? They will accept the fact that price for this, you know, asset in a risk off environment is this. But what happens when, in fact, risk becomes more on? 
that asset then starts to become or look like an actual bargain and then buying you know typically tends to happen and again going back to the chart that's really what happened with uh, the Australian dollar typically the um, the Japanese yen is seen as a risk off currency and we were still in the grips of COVID even into May, June, July by the end of the year. But what was driving the Australian dollar higher against the Japanese yen, which typically shouldn't happen, was several factors. So one of them was an impending um, vaccine, right? That was, um, um, you know, a, a resolution to COVID. Um, also as well, the fact that Australia handled the uh, COVID lockdown uh, better than most countries and they were seen as actually um, growing first. One of the countries that would probably end up um, growing first in terms of GDP, um, whereas a lot of other countries didn't handle the COVID lockdown very well, Japan being one of them. And so the market was more forward thinking, even though COVID and the fear of COVID and COVID spreading and different variants were coming out. The market was forward thinking in looking at solutions and resolutions and comparing the Australian economy to the Japanese economy, right? Which wasn't doing too well. And so again, going back to um, understanding that risks off risk off events will eventually be priced in and also it gives investors an opportunity to actually buy undervalued assets whether it's stocks whether it's exchange rates etc now how to know when the risk off or risk on um, sentiment um, sorry let me just read that again so how to know when risk is off or on and to what degree, right? And that's really the uh, the, the, the key question. And um, it will take some time for you to, and experience for you to really kind of get a grip on it. And even then it's very, it's, it's quite hard to do, but um, you know, your best educated guess is that you want to look towards um, publications like Bloomberg or the Financial Times or Reuters and actually look at the front pages right the headlines and so you know today is uh, Monday the 3rd of April and we look at the front page of the news and we have for example the recent um, news is OPEC makes shock uh, million barrel cut in new inflation risk and inflation crisis pulls European countries into a food fight. Uh, Putin's war may be reaching pivotal moment. ECB warns of risk posed by um, one trillion real estate fund, etc., etc. Right? But notice what we're not seeing on this front page, which is although you know the news is here to sell, um, you know doom and gloom. Uh, certain times, what we're not seeing is um, the recent risk. Um, event crisis which was the banking collapse right so um you know in terms of you know svb bank being systemic right we've got other um issues going on and so when we had the uh, svb bank uh, bailout deutsche bank being bailed out by ubs etc and, and the issues that those banking um you know giants had it would have been it would have looked the front page of Bloomberg was looking very, um, you know, one-sided in terms of there was just a one-way story, yeah? But now you have various different stories. And so when you want to understand, okay, well, is one headline dominating uh, the risk on and risk off sentiment and how severe it is, look at the variety of the stories on the front page of any major news publication if it's more varied probably means that risk is um less off i wouldn't say it's necessarily on because i don't think there's any, ever going to be a time where there's nothing to really kind of worry about right again good news doesn't sell but to the varying degree of um you know certain risk events 
if it's really kind of focused and concentrated on one story or maybe one or two stories, then you know that you're probably more in a risk off environment and that the market is really focused on that narrative rather than, okay, the varying degrees of stories from around the world, yeah, that will probably mean less risk off, yeah? So again, if we, you know, draw it as a scale, or understand it as a scale, yeah? where you have varying degrees of risk on and risk off. Right, this being risk off, this being probably more neutral. If you have more um, uh, varied news on the front pages of, you know, publications like Bloomberg, Reuters, Financial Times, you're probably maybe somewhere towards risk off, risk, probably more neutral, right? And again, it depends on the quality and the actual incidences in the um, that are happening, right? But if you have one, tend to have one sole event that the market is focused on, and also as well, you know, you go to Bloomberg, Financial Times, and Reuters, and they're all talking about the same things, right? Every every uh, news publication is focused on this one news event, then it's likely that you're probably looking at more of the extreme end of the risk off uh, scale yeah and so that for me is how i also understand um you know where i am in a risk of sentiment also finally one of the things that i didn't um i didn't cover sorry was price does not lead risk sentiment and what i really wanted to say with that is that many traders believe that if Let's say, you know, we know that the stock market tends to rise in a risk uh, on environment. Yeah. So which means that investors are looking to take risks and put market and uh, to get you know bigger returns. Right. So when the stock market starts to rise. That would mean risk, risk on. And if the market starts to pull back, then that would mean risk off. Then that would mean risk on. Then that would mean risk off. And really, you can't and you shouldn't uh, determine whether risk is on or off based on what price is doing. Because price can trend, right? And prices can pull back in a risk on environment. And they do pull back in a risk on environment in the same way that if you have a risk off environment, yeah, prices can pull back. Yeah, prices pull back for varying reasons, for liquidity reasons, for people taking profit, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's not, you know, one day on, one day off, one day on, one day off because prices are going up and down. You have to take your cues from actual actually reading the media. I know there's going to be a lot of news, a lot of um a lot of noise uh, sometimes in the market, but this is a skill that you have to develop is to learn to filter through the noise. As I said before, previously understanding whether the narrative is on all um, publications or, or is it actually now a situation where the narrative um, and news publications are not focused on just one main news story and in fact they're focused on varying various news stories also as well of course it can be more nuanced because the news stories could um also definitely still affect the stock market um and it also depends on the the, the news stories itself but from a risk on and risk off and how extreme we are in a risk on and risk off environment just know that um you know it's um it's uh, the narrative, either a single narrative or many narratives. Also as well, it's important to keep in mind that risk off will eventually be priced in. It will eventually find its uh, value in a risk off environment. And then eventually, depending on obviously the risk, um, the, the risk event, um, you know, the market will start to forward think and start to say, OK, well, is this going to be a continuation? How long is this likely to last? If it's not likely to last that long, then they start to buy or sell, go long or go short on that narrative against actually risk off sentiment. All right, guys, hope that helps. Take care and uh, speak soon.